Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going to tell you about a um, little visitor centre, um, the evolution, the trials and triumphs that we went through to get where we were, and the problem of having a small budget and a council that didn't understand tourism or its value to its community. Um, we're under-resourced. How did we manage to lift the profile of tourism within the community? And what projects and strategies did we use to get where we are today? What were our challenges? There are a few. Um, how did we... Ah, how did we not give up when we were told you can't do that? Um, and how did we get help, our challenges ahead, and what is our plan for continued growth of the visitor economy and the value to the community? Uh, how do we cal calculate and show the value to the community of having a VIC? And what has been our innovation along the way? So here we go, we're on a journey. So in the beginning, tourism came to Kyogre with railway in 1910. That looks like a mass exodus from Kyogre, but it actually wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, it was pretty exciting back in the time, a train coming to town. It was pretty much like the launch of the latest iPhone um, by today's <laughs> standards. But that was 1910, and just look at those whites, eh? How do they do that? And dressing your kids up like that to go to a function. So over time, we got the tourism message. So here's the four decades of tourism promotion for Kyogre before we started the visitor centre, actually. So we had brochures. So, um, about once every 10 years they'd produce 30,000 of these things and that was it. They just kind of walked on from there. So the community said, we really want, we really want a visitor centre. Do we really need it? So there with my faithful little son, we sat at an expo and we asked the question, did you really want it? Do you really need an info centre? And I had a little book there and when I had 20 supporters who were going to come along with me on the journey, then off we went. We started a committee. So away we went. Where were we going to put this visitor centre? So the sale yards, it was a focal point for Kyogle um, oh, for many, many years. It was finally pulled down in the 1980s when everything transferred to Casino. So the little building in front of the selling ring there, that you can see the little square one, that became very significant. So the evolution of our visitor centre, we asked council who own the land now, can we occupy that building? And they said yes. So as a volunteer committee, in we went. So open it, they will come. And they did come. Um, so they were... That's where we started with our volunteer group. We manned that little building of a weekend. Um, and every weekend, and we got more and more popular and we developed our tourism stuff from the questions we were asked. Our material, I should say, not stuff. All was going really well. The little info shed that we had was looked upon as a great success for tourism. And people were starting to take notice of us and Kyogre was slowly getting put back on the map. But then outside forces came in. National Parks wanted to close some of our most scenic drives. We didn't really attack them, as the paper says, <laughs> but, but, but we did suggest there's probably a better way of doing things. And on top of this, well, the Northern Star hopped on and said, parks are for the people, and they said, yes, they are, if you want to walk. And our council decided to walk away from our caravan park. And then our railway station was in threat. All this is all happening in the space of months. And then our dam, Trinidad Dam, 11,000 megalitre water, water reservoir that um, is one of the only ones on the Northern Rivers that you can actually have a power boat on and is loaded with bass fish. It was under the microscope whether they were going to, still going to use that. And you go, oh, what do you do? Call on inspiration. So either from distant relatives <laughs> <laughs> or you call on your mentors. Now this is Mr. Jack Hurley. Um, and he built the Lions Road, or he, not by himself, with him and his mates, as it says. Um, but he was an inspiration there. And he actually talked the, um, the Moreton Bay Rabbit Board into allowing him to drop the border rabbit fence um, to put a grid in so we could cross the border, vehicles could cross the border. And they did. That was something that was a bit unheard of. So I went to, he was one of my mentors, and we recently lost another, Mr Alan Brown, who was also part of Brown and Hurley. The council got federal funding for a visitor centre. We went, a you beauty, here we go. So we designed this thing because the sail yards were gone, so we could build another roof like a sail yard, build it in local timbers to describe the timber industry, have totem poles up there telling stories from the beginning of time, walks through our circular building back out to the present day. Historic pictures all around the walls. And this is what we got. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, a, uh, that's like a massive solar panel that roof and a face to the west. So it kind of, it was like when the kid asked for the swing and everybody put their two bobs in worth that really didn't know what they were doing.
But anyway, at the end of the day, so I whinged to my friend Jack and I said, look what we could have had and look what they gave us. And he told me, Malcolm, they can make you do everything. He said, love the child. So just toughen up, sweetheart, and work with what you got. <laughs> so that's what we did. But we did, get, we did get nice gardens. We got a nice amphitheater, nice barbecues. And now we've got the country cafe moved in, and that's a great value added to any visitor centre. And now we've become a destination with those clean toilets and all the, all the other bits and pieces we've got. And of course the quality service, customer service that we have in there. Um, it does get a little wet down there sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are in a 10 year flood zone. <laughs> and we also, we had the battle at council that didn't really understand tourism or its value to the community. So, well, to be fair to our council, they weren't in the business of tourism. We weren't a pothole, we weren't a bridge, we weren't a road. What do you do with it? Um, council attempted to hand the keys when they built that centre to a volunteer group, which I was leading at the time, and I gave them back and said, you've got the facility, get professional. So they received funding to put a tourism officer on, and um, I ended up with the job, which I thought, you beauty. But then they gave the keys back and they said, make it happen. So how did I make it happen? And this is where AVIC accreditation, the criteria really helped because through that criteria, we'll be able to develop our operations and the standards we had to, had to live up to. So thereby the training, everything went along. All of a sudden it's very easy to put a team, team together. Accreditation leads to customer, customer service satisfaction, or customer satisfaction, sorry. And, um, and also a fairly professional operation, even though you're 100% volunteer run. So first thing I had to do was assemble a team and there they are, the first lot that followed me in through the doors. Um, we trained that team. We put the uniforms on them so they looked like a team and then we let them have a bit of fun along the way. So they were all happy days. And then I reward them. And the simple things I wanted was just a barbecue once a month. And when you're dealing with volunteers, it's the best way to get them in one place at one time so you can have a chat to them. We take them on for meals to some of our best attractions, feed them a, um, a sausage sizzle, they love that or you take them out to operators and it's a good way for the operators to get their message across to their first line of marketing quite often when people come into the visitor centre. Small budget, how do you deal with a small budget? You partner up, you get strength and unity. Like we had no money, who had money? Lismore had money. I'm going to become, I'm going to become best mates with Mitch. <laughs> Mitch has got money. But that evolved into a greater partnership that was with the tourism management group. Now these guys have been invaluable to us um, and they stepped us up. We're probably 30 years advanced of where we probably would have been um, without the assistance of these guys through sharing skill and knowledge um, and helping us along the way and also financially that um, they had massive budgets. <laughs> they'd sit around the table and we'd talk and they'd say, oh, we've got uh, you know, 10,000k to put to this and I'd go, yeah, i got a dollar. Um, <laughs> But anyway, they let me buy in a fifth of the, a fifth of the um, to buy in for a fifth of the action, but we had our logo there, so we were off. And then we also had our regional tourism organisation, which was Northern Rivers Tourism at the time. They morphed into Destination, uh, North Coast Destination Network, and that line on their logo is kind of like a demarcation line between the mature market on the coast and us emerging markets of the hinterland. It's really good. But our best... Our best probably partnership, well, I won't say best, but equal to Tourism Management Group, is Australia's Green Cold and the National Landscape Projects because now we've got cross-border partnerships and, um, and we play with the Gold Coast and Scenic Rim and Tweed, so that's really good. But one of the most important things out of our Tourism Management Group um, partnership was their objectives, uh, and exactly what we needed. We needed destination management, we needed to develop, develop our destination um, and then the advocacy to get everybody talking and then we had something to market. And also out of that became the Regional Visitor Services Strategy which is a great asset to us because how were we going to operate our visitor centre um, and where did we need them? Um, how are we going to develop and sharing initiatives between council and that's working really well at the moment. Um, we needed to maximise our efficiencies particularly when you are under resourced you need to do what you can and incorporate new technology to our VICs, and that's advancing all the time, as we'll find out very shortly. And where do we want to be in five or 10 years' time? And through this partnership, we were able to enter the 2010 North Coast Tourism Awards, where little old Kyogre became a finalist. Council was very happy. But um, since we got 
developed um, a little bit bigger and more more going on. You just haven't got time to write the application. They haven't given me enough money to buy buy someone who can write that application for me. Marketing 101. What is value for money? So with regional marketing, we put our money into the legendary Pacific Coast, but it seemed that all the benefit went to Byron. Some of the people at our way weren't particularly happy with this because their focus was on the Summerlin Way, which was the inland route <laughs> up, to, up to Brisbane and where they saw the major part of our market coming along. And they were so focused on the Summerlin Way that they even forgot to put Byron on the map. Now, I've... Um, <coughs> but we... Um, but what I've, I've learned from the example of um, Hinchinbrook, Hinchinbrook Island up near Cairns, is that if you don't include those people on the map or those identities, then you're missing a lot. So we need to get Byron back on that map, um, which we'll do. Um, Australia's Green Cauldron. This is where we are, and this is our Australian, um, this is our land, national landscape. We're in there, they put Byron back on the map, and Cool and Gadda and Brisbane, so people know exactly where they are. This is our ticket to the international market, um, and this is, uh, uh, the Green Cauldron is one of 16 iconic places around Australia um, to market out through tourism Australia. The Rainforest Way, we're re, um, rejigging that, um, which is part of the National Landscapes Project, so that gets people onto the, our self-drive market, it gets them onto um, into Australia's Green Cauldron, onto the Rainforest Way and directly to us. So in 2012, Kyogle did win the State Tidy Towns Award, so we could literally say we were top of the state there for a while, and we still use that a bit. Um, and from the collaboration of our marketing, um, we went in with, this was a tourism management group and North Coast Destination Network campaign into South East Queensland. We could pick the spots we wanted. Um, and that was a double page new newspaper spread that went out through Ipswich, Sunshine Coast um, and Toowoomba we went. And that developed into a partnership that we've got now or a, or a relationship we've got with River 94.9 which targets, um, targets the 35 to 55 year age group and they're right, sitting right in our market. Um, and from that we could be able to do radio campaigns. So we were under resourced, but that, our advertising, it was, um, they did a really good campaign. So they, we live in a beautiful world and we're able to showcase um, three operators through that and people won prizes. So it was National Kyogre Week one Saturday and International Kyogre Week the next Saturday. Um, and it worked really well. And a young lady who won the prize on the morning show, she's been back four times, so she's become a repeat customer down to Ripples on the Creek, which is a couples retreat. And the last one, the last example I had there on the radio was that um, was a 70-year-old grandmother would bring in her grandkids down to a couple's retreat, so sometimes it doesn't quite work the way you want. But anyway, you'll just have to imagine that. <laughs> so under-resourced, how did we lift the profile of tourism in the community? The community pretty much took ownership from the start. Um, there was a dis distinct change in the social self-esteem, and when we tagged ourselves Kyogle and Villages, that brought everybody in on board. And we got those communities to fall in love with themselves because other people were starting to take notice and they thought, ooh, we better clean up our backyard. Also, the government empowered us by denying us. And by that I mean, we missed grant after grant after grant after grant and we thought, well, the only way we're gonna make this happen is we've gotta do it for ourselves. So, and that's what we did. So I was able to go to the community and say, you gotta use teamwork, collaboration. If you want it done, you're gonna to have to do it. So you need to go to, you're gonna to need to contribute, either that's in kind, or in dollars, and they rallied around and we did. So we, we got some things happening, and when people saw things happening, then the residents thought, this visitor place, it's a pretty good joint, that. That's where you can turn ideas into reality. So they came down and they did that, and I just kept spruiking to everyone, the best way to predict your future is to create it, and that's Abraham Lincoln's line, and I thought it's a beauty. And we also needed to think a little bit differently. Okay. How did we calculate and show council the value of the VIC? Well, it was no longer tourism. We are in the visitor economy, so it had an economy. So there was money coming back in. Visitor statistics were very important. We highlighted the economic value of visitors to them. Positive news stories going out in the paper about their town and under their governance. And we got seven coffee shops for 2,000 people. We don't drink that much coffee. But they employ at least three people each. And also visitor statistics. Um, I could show them where the visitors were coming from, how much they were spending and how much that spending equated into jobs. And there's the, important of, um, the importance of 
um, events. That's when the World Rally Championships came to town and then one weekend created quite a few more jobs. Projects and strategies that we did, we not constantly need to think outside the square. If we're doing what everybody else is doing, what's our point of difference? So what is our point of difference? We don't have the, um, the big banana or the big prawn. We like to think we've got the big warm welcome. Being a country town, authentic, rural experience, all of that, we're very welcoming. Um, biggest part of our strategy, and it's probably most important for all small visitor centres out there, is partnerships, partnerships, partnerships. Can't emphasise that enough is that um, you have to partner up with those people around you, particularly in your region. Teamwork's very important. Make everybody in that team feel appreciated, give them simple rewards, and keep everything as simple as possible. You don't have the money to do big things, so um, bring it down to your level so you can cater with it or cope with it. And let people know what you're doing. It's no good winking in the dark. Another one of my mentor's sayings. Um, remain true to your goals, your community, your area and your region, and seek advice and import skills. So this is very important. Everybody wanted to hop on social media, but they didn't know how to do it. So we went to the school and said, do any of you guys want to go down and adopt a business, adopt a business and help them get on social media? And they said, yeah, sure. So these guys do it in the dark. And they, oh, well, yeah, they kind of, they do it in their sleep. They're very good at it. And then when you're given the range and you say, I would like a nice, pretty brochure, next thing they're sitting in a computer and off they go. These guys help develop um, an emporium we're wanting to do because... It's for their future, not mine, so you need to involve them. Uni students from Sydney got us a management plan for a signature community event that we're developing. Um, Blair from Southern Cross and Kayleigh Diston did reports and their internships on a mountain bike strategy. Now we've got on the other end of that picture is Justin Black from State Forest have come on board and now we've got a uh, mountain bike industry developing and growing all the time, which is wonderful. Uh, what were our challenges? There were plenty of them, I can tell you about it about them um, probably a little bit later. Having too many eggs in one basket was very, very difficult. You had to hand those on. Getting projects shovel ready, but being a small rural community was probably the hardest one because the government strategy was pointing everything to regional centres. Um, and now, because I can't be all things to all people, I had to get those villages' self-esteem built up so that they do it for themselves. So now we have that, the yellow eye emblazoned in Benalbo. <coughs> at the pub, which is a bit of doing. We helped get it happening in Urbanville um, with Tenerfield Shire. We're going to have it in Tabulum and we're going to have them in Woodenbong. So it's going to be all over our villages. Um, how did we get to where we are? Passion, drive, perseverance and patience. And most importantly, patience. It takes a long time for things to happen. Um, and then I guess reading all through that, the biggest statement to come out of there is that we use a little girl strategy that if you wanted a kitten, ask daddy for a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Our future's so bright we need to wear shades, that's what we're saying at the moment, um, because um, but we always got to be prepared for the inevitable. And one thing that came out, and following on from Peter's, from Peter's um, presentation there earlier, signage is increasing, is very, very important to us. So what we're allowed to have in our little town is a 500 metres from the visitor centre sign, but when you go under that railway viaduct and around the corner you're in the visitor busiest intersection in Kyogle and, um, and then it becomes very confusing because when you get to our visitor centre we've only got that little yellow eye out the front and if somebody parks an RV there you can't see it but all the directional signage is on the other side of the road so people's eyes are over there and we're over there so it makes it a bit hard so we put our thinking caps on and thought how about and me and Peter haven't been in collaboration with this but every town roughly around New South Wales has got one of these stop, revive, survive, five kilometres so that's aimed at the visiting, the visiting um, um, traffic. So if they're visitors, they'd probably need to know why they want to stop. Well, we've got a visitor centre. And we've got those clean toilets. And we've got disabled toilets. You can get some tucker, you can have a cuppa, and you can park your caravan. So if we put those five kilometres out of every town, um, yeah, that would be a, a great asset to us. Uh, and then... Oh, sorry. <laughs> So then um, we're two hours from Brisbane by rail, which would help us, our local economy, um, greatly, but um, they changed the rail timetable so that um, now they've picked on Nana, city trains, you're in for a bit of a blue. That's it. Keep going? Okay, I'll, I'll rust it along. So being a two hour commute, having a train going through at 2.30 in the morning, turning straight around and coming back does nothing for us. So I put a strategy to them, and this is um, 
gave them three options and all of those options included a twice daily service, either be it with the XPT, something else, or inviting Queensland Rail to come down. Um, government still decided not to listen, so where do we go then? Richard wants to expand Virgin Trains out of the UK, he's into America, he's into Canada, and I said, what a great launch site for Virgin Rail in Australia. <laughs> he hasn't written back yet, but when he does, <laughs> <laughs> but when he does, <laughs> we'll let him know. Uh, yeah. um, so the plan for the continued growth of our visitor economy is develop and support, and support um, the product, uh, keep training our staff, because with volunteers they keep turning over and keep finding those things, um, develop business plans and capacity build our small business, tourism operators, all sorts of things. And make the areas the whole experience. And very important, build on those partnerships. You must build on those partnerships where you can. And you also got to be a little bit different. Um, and these are just examples of, we've got a big empty space that we want to turn into markets. It's a project, these are future projects that we've got going on. Top of the state track and trail development. This is where our local mountain bike riders are already riding. So we can develop that and become, have a quite significant track and trail network into South East Queensland and get those riders down there and boost our economy. As luck would have it, that was an American, Troy Rarick, who made his millions developing tracks in, in Colorado. And he was coming to town to visit, got wind of what we were doing, and Nick Bowman was the head of um, mountain biking Australia. So they were coming to town to have a bit of a look at what we are doing. So he got an international speaker, put on a seminar. So then we were able to tell everybody's story and things starting to lighten up. The Kyogre Bazaar markets, we finally got markets in that amphitheatre after about six years of trying to get them happening. And now they're looking at the future of putting a sound shell down there so we can have more events, more community events. Support imported events like the Border Rangers Rally. We lost the World Rally, but we've got this little local one. So we get the kids involved. So that's a little fellow waving the car off and he won that opportunity was through a colouring competition and if the kid comes, mum and dad comes, sisters come and nana comes and you get a crowd. We're a great, because of our topography, motorcyclists love us so we have the Lions TTs come to town to use the Lions Road, the Jack built and, um, and these guys were a group of friends who all went to school in Cobar and they hadn't been together as a group of mates before that so that looks like a fairly long time. What's been my innovation? It's been the rugby coaching certificate. Participation and performance. You just, you assemble your team, you mentor, you motivate them, and then you're always looking for opportunities. And also, it's very hard to beat a person who's never going to give up. Thank you. Thank you.